Welcome to our service of worship. Glad to see each of you here today. Especially want to welcome those visiting among us. Been uh, praying for a while that we'd have a Sunday without snow. Still waiting for that one, I guess. Patience, right? <laughs> Do you see that little little stuff coming down? I don't know if it came in your neighborhood, but we got a little, little bit of snow this morning. But not so bad, right? Please notice the announcements in your bulletin. Like we got a lot of great things coming up here, uh, and you can read all about it in the newsletter that is out on the Welcome Center if you haven't got one yet. Uh, for January, uh, she calls it the January newsletter. I guess guess because we print it in January. Is that it, Leona? It, it's actually more about February, but that's all right. Um, Valentine's potluck is coming up February 10th. The uh, chili cook-off is the 17th, and uh, the over chili, we're just gonna have lots of chili, evidently, in uh, February, sounds, I, I like chili. Uh, that's the 24th, so. Then we have a movie night coming up, too, and that's the 23rd of uh, February. So, keep all those, those things in mind. Any other announcements need to be made? at this point. All right, well, let's stand and greet each other in friendship and in the peace of Christ. Will you join in the call to worship? Lord Jesus, we praise you for bringing good news. You are great news in this world of bad news. You bring release to we who are captive to sin. You bring sight to we who are blind to your presence and power. You let we who are oppressed go free. You proclaim, proclaim the, the time, time when God, God will rule and we praise you now in, in your, your precious, precious name. name. Amen. Amen. The opening hymn, Christ Whose Glory Fills the Skies, page 173 of the hymnal are on the screen. Christ is glory Arise, triumph for the shades of night, day spring from on high beneath, day star in my heart appear. Dark and cheerless is the morn on a company by thee. Joyless is the day's return Till thy mercies beam thy sea Till they inward light impart Glad my eyes and warm my heart Visit 
seated. And would the children come forward now for the children's time, please, as we sing the first verse of Jesus Loves Me. Do that. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. Good morning. How are we? Good morning. Hey, bro. <laughs> yes, Jesus. <laughs> hey there, sweet girl. Oh, well, maybe not. Okay. Right there, that's okay. <laughs> Jesus. Hey there. <laughs> Bible tells me so. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about promises today because Jesus made some special promises we're going to be hearing about. But I wanted you to see my ring. Can you see the ring on my finger here? You want, do you want to touch that? See it? Can you touch it? That, that is the promise I made to my wife, to Diane, that I would be her husband, that I would care for her, that I would be with her, that I would provide for her and love her the rest of my life, okay? Um, so that was a promise that I made. Um, I need a lot of help to make that, to fulfill that promise, and that's why I asked God to help us. And, and that's why we prayed, and that's why we, we came together in a church service to ask Jesus to be with us and to help us love each other and keep loving each other forever, okay? Jesus made a promise. He said that uh, I promise that I'm going to be good news for the poor. I'm going to bring sight to the blind. I'm going to set the captives free. Um, and... Isn't that, aren't those great promises that he made? You know, and he can fulfill those promises because he is God. And he said, it, this was in scripture, it was, a, it was a promise that he read from Isaiah. And he said, the, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing right now because he is God and he can do it because he has power to do it. And I think what, he wants us to do is to hear those promises and to do what we can do to help people who are poor, help people who might be blind, help people who might be sick or oppressed. I wonder what, what, what you could do, promise to do to help Jesus to love those people, huh? Love people that maybe don't have food right now, maybe people who are hungry, maybe some people who are cold, because they don't have heat in their house. Uh, what could we do? How could we help? Let's think about that and maybe ask your mom and dad how you could help people that are, that are in need right now, need some help, okay? Because uh, we promise as followers of Jesus to do what he does, which is to love people, right? Should we pray? Thank you, Lord, for your promise to, to love us and to care for people people that are hurting, people that are poor and sick and blind and, and oppressed, uh, people that feel in prison. Uh, bless these children as, as they do your work to show your love to the people they know, to the friends they know. Uh, do what they can. Uh, and they can do great things, Lord, just by being there, by playing maybe with a friend who doesn't have a friend or... Uh, help uh, somebody who they, their family knows might be poor to bring them some food or maybe share a dinner with them. 
And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, got something special for you there as we sing some more. Okay. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus. so you couldn't hear all my mistakes there. So. God is also merciful. Thank you for that, right? So, so let's turn now to a time of prayer. Notice here are several things. This is good. A uh, prayer for Jeff and Denise Sears going to... Uh, Cancer Clinic in Pennsylvania for Denise, more or less mentions. Um, for Karen Lamb's Outreach Ministry at Lulu's Luncheery, article ran in Friday's newspaper. So that was very nice. Uh -huh. And special prayer for Angie Green, uh, granddaughter of deceased uh, Havelock Members Nor uh, Morris and Jean Carlton, present members Mel and Glemma King. Angie is in a special hospital in Nevada battling bladder cancer. So keep them, keep her in your thoughts. Uh, Max says, My mother Patricia visiting me today, attending church. That's a joy. So glad to have Pat with us today. And, uh, 
And that's what I, what I have. I think it was a, a great joy for many of us that uh, were involved in the Holy Spirit and encounter this weekend and all the people that helped. I'm thinking especially of Sandy and Leona and Laura, I know several others. Uh, Gary did a lot of help uh, that helped us with that. So, so praise the Lord for that experience. So uh, let's come to prayer. May the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray together our prayer of confession. Our Heavenly Father, who by your love has made us and through your love has kept us and in your love would make us perfect, we humbly confess that we have not loved you with all our heart and soul and mind and strength and that we have not loved one another as Christ hath loved us. Thy life is within our souls, but our selfishness has hindered thee. We have not lived by faith. We have resisted your spirit. We have neglected your inspirations. Forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are, and in thy spirit direct what we shall be, that thou may come into the full glory of thy creation, in us and in all the people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we praise you for your presence with us, for loved ones who come and visit, like uh, Max's mom with her, him today, uh, for Karen Lamb's great outreach ministry at Lulu's, and we thank you for what you're doing there to, to minister to people. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that is always with us and reminds us of, of you, Lord Jesus, and of our Creator, God, as well. And uh, we thank you for this encounter weekend and those, all those that helped and, and were part of that. Uh, we ask special prayer for Angie Green uh, and battling cancer, as well as uh, Jeff and Denise Sears. Uh, Lord, and so the, the many that have cancer in our, our community and among our loved ones, Lord, we thank you for those who are, are researching for cures, for those who are doing what they can to help. I also am thankful, Lord, today for workers who clear streets and sidewalks, who put out salt, and uh, sometimes in late hours in the middle of the night. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for all our, our workers. And uh, we ask your safety and, and to help for them. And we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Um, I asked um, that as we worship this morning, that um, we just allow, you know, the Holy Spirit's been in here the last few days, so why don't we keep that running today? Um, let's um, <laughs> praise the Lord, and then let's ask the Holy Spirit to join us. So if you'll please rise.
song do you have on the screen? What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? This one. We're doing this one? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, gracefully broken. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Your spirit, Lord Jesus, is on us too, to proclaim good news to the poor, to the captives, to the weary. We give trusting you to fulfill your good news through us. Will the ushers please come at this time? While the ushers are coming, would you please sign the registration pad that's in each pew?
to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my death to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord I live to name Compassionate God, we dedicate these gifts to your care for the poor, the prisoners, the hurting in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> the first reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 through 31. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would make, not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a simple member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our most respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistant, assistance, forms of leaderships, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, 
Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. This ends the first reading. And the uh, still more excellent way is love, isn't it? And we go into the love chapter, chapter 13. This is a great uh, chapter, I think, uh, to study about the church. And we all need one another, just like every part of the body needs the other parts. We all need each of you. Each of you is important uh, to the body of Christ. So I invite you to stand now for the reading of the gospel from Luke 14 beginning in verse, or excuse me, Luke 4, beginning in verse 14. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to release the captives to, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. May God bless this reading to our understanding. You may be seated. St. Francis was riding on his horse one day uh, down a country road and he came upon a leper that was on the side of the road and first he was kind of afraid and you know, he really didn't want to do, have much to do with this leper like many of us might think. Probably a person who uh, had bleeding hands and and bleeding in their face. They probably looked terrible um, as they were sitting on the side of the road. So at uh, first he decided he was just going to throw him a, some money. So he, he threw him some money and went on down the road a ways. But the, <laughs> but the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit does sometimes, was convicting him that he needed to go back. And so he came back and he, he got down off of his horse <laughs> and went and hugged that leper uh, because probably more than anything that leper needed touch because people just would not touch lepers in those days uh, and brought him home uh, to minister to him. They say that half of the world goes to bed hungry and the other half doesn't see their hunger. Half of the world goes to bed hungry and the other half doesn't see their hunger. Jesus said, I came to bring good news. Good news for the poor. Good news for captives. Good news for those who are blind. For those who are oppressed. Now, I think some of us might say, well, uh, that's all those other people over there. Those people that are poor, those people that are captives, those people that are blind or oppressed. But I would challenge you to realize that uh, we all fit these categories. As, as if, if you read in the uh, call to worship today, um, many of us are poor in spirit. Uh, if not in finances. <laughs> uh, many of us, all of us, are needy. All of us need help. Uh, all of us need one another. 
Uh, we need Jesus. All of us are captive to sin. Uh, it's a part of our nature. Uh, we're, we're, our tendency is to do it ourselves. We don't need anybody. We don't need Jesus. We don't need God. We don't need the church. We can do it ourselves. That's the, the, the spirit of sin. And what does that path lead to, right? When we do it ourselves, when we try it our own way instead of God's way, what happens? Death, the scripture says. And it is death producing, which is, it separates us from God and from one another. That's what death does. But Jesus came to set us free. Free the captives. And I think all of us are blind. We're blind to see God's glory, to see people as Jesus sees people, as God sees people with love, with kindness, with great affection. Uh, many, I think all of us are blind. We, we can't quite see yet Jesus face to face. We don't know yet and haven't experienced yet the fullness and the glory that is, is God, is Jesus. We, we need our eyes open, the eyes of our spirits, the eyes of uh, God's part in our life. And we are oppressed. And I, I don't think I have to talk about that too much, right? Uh, that many of us are, are, are hurt because of government, because of of systems that, that keep us down, of, of a world system that uh, is destructive. Uh, it's all around us. We're all oppressed. And we're oppressed by Satan and by people that are instruments of Satan that call us names and put us down. We are oppressed. But Jesus came to lift us up, to love us to see help us see that we're God's children we're citizens of the kingdom of God that God has prepared for us today Jesus said this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing today you know um, actually what that God Jesus was uh, people that got mad and almost threw him over the cliff. Why were they so angry? Because he proclaimed to be God. Because he proclaimed to be better than all the prophets and all the, the that had gone before him today, Jesus said. This scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, to the Hebrew people, Hearing is more than just sound waves hitting your ears. Okay? Jesus said many times, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And he wasn't talking about sound. He was talking about doing it. If you hear this word, do it. Okay? And Jesus didn't just hear these words. Jesus did them and is doing them and all who hear this word will do it who really hear it and understand it who hear the cries and we don't stay up on our high horse right we get down off our high horse and help the people that God has called us to help and love the people God has called us to love and be the people God has called us to be right it's more than just words. It's action. And, and we see that in Christ, don't we? In the people that, that follow him. Jesus is way more than talk. There was a 16-year-old uh, a boy who was in the uh, courtroom. And he'd been there many times before. And the judge was getting frustrated with him. He'd... Uh, He'd had many crimes uh, that he'd committed. 
uh, the judge was ready to put him in jail uh, and maybe even, you know, <laughs> call him a, an adult instead of just a juvenile and it, it was just getting bad. And, and every time that the, uh, he would be cross-examined or that, that he'd uh, address the court, the, he was just uh, belligerent, this little boy, this boy uh, just didn't seem to get it. You know, it was everybody else's fault, and he never did anything wrong, and, you know, on and on he would go. Uh, but in the courtroom that day happened to be a man named Weston. Mr. Weston uh, had a farm for boys uh, who were in, in trouble. And the, the judge uh, talked to Mr. Weston. He said, you know, this, this, this boy is beyond help. I mean, I, not even you can help him, Mr. Weston. Uh, we, we just got to put him in jail. And Mr. Weston said, no, judge, this boy just needs to be loved. He hasn't known love yet. He needs a father who will love him. I, I want him to come to my farm. And there was crying of that little boy in that room when he knew there was somebody who loved him for the first time in his life. He knew somebody who loved him. There's good news. The good news when we hear it. When we hear that we are really loved when God makes it clear we're loved and we can love others can't we we can be released from all that is binding us and keeping us from doing all God wants us to do when we when we really know from the bottom of our souls that we are loved then we can love others so I invite you to get off your high horse to get down on the ground and, and, and hug those people that need to be hugged and love them because God loves them, because you are loved and you can love them too. And I believe that when you hug them, you're gonna find Jesus in your arms. going to get it here. There we go. Lord, I keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Ain't got time to die cause when I'm healing the sick, when I'm healing the sick, when I'm healing the sick, I'm praising my Jesus, ain't got time to die, cause it takes all of my time to praise my Jesus, all of my time to praise my Lord. If I don't praise Him, the rock's gonna cry out, glory and honor, glory and honor. Ain't got time to die, Lord, I keep so busy working for the kingdom. Keep so busy working for the kingdom. Keep so busy working for the kingdom. Ain't got time to die, cause when I'm feeding the poor, when I'm feeding the poor, when I'm feeding the poor, I'm working for the kingdom. Ain't got time to die, cause it takes all of my time to praise my Jesus. All of my time to praise my Lord. If I don't praise him, the rock's gonna cry out, glory and honor. 
glory and honor ain't got time to die lord i keep so busy serving my master keep so busy serving my master keep so busy serving my master ain't got time to die cause when i'm giving my all when i'm giving my all when I'm giving my all, I'm serving my master. Ain't got time to die, cause it takes all of my time to praise my Jesus, all of my time to praise my Lord. If I don't praise him, the rock's gonna cry out, glory and honor, glory and honor. Ain't got time to die. No, won't you get out of my way? Gonna chase my Jesus out of my way. Gonna praise my Lord if I don't praise him. The rock's gonna cry out. Glory and honor, glory and honor. Ain't got time to die. Lord, we, we praise you, praise you for the power that you give us to, to serve, to love, to be all that you are, our lover, our servant, our savior, our friend. And we praise you for what you're gonna do and the power of your Holy Spirit as we walk with you in the days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you now to uh, stand as you're able. And hear the calling of Jesus. Jesus calls us. Or the tumult. <clears throat> Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our lives, wild, restless sea. Day by day his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. As of old the apostles heard it, by the Galilean lake Turn from home and toil and kindred Leaving all for his dear sake Jesus calls us from the worship Of the vain world's golden star from each idol that would keep us saying Christian love me more in our joys and in our sorrows days of toil and hours of ease still he calls in cares and pleasures Christian love me more than these Jesus calls us by thy mercy may we hear, we hear thy call give our hearts to thine obedience serve and love thee best of all And now, dear Lord, send us forth in the power of your Spirit to be all you called us to be, to be a part of your ministry of love, of mercy, of kindness, of peace for the people that we see this week, setting us free so, and setting them free for your kingdom. So we go now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.